Good morning. Welcome to this series, Rooted in God's Word. Today we are in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 19, verses 23 through 20, uh, 38. Uh, today is episode number 37 of our study of the book of Genesis. Uh, we are concluding the story of Lot today. This is the end of chapter 19. This is the conclusion of Lot's story. And Lot, as you look back on his life, was not one that I would hold up to be admired. Lot made a whole lot of mistakes. Now, he was a man of faith. He did walk in faith from time to time. He did do the right thing from time to time. But mostly, Lot's life is a demonstration of disobedience and pain and the resulting consequences of not completely wholeheartedly submitting your life to the Lord, of continuing to keep one foot in the world and one foot with God. And when you choose to do so, there will be results and uh, consequences that result often in a lot of pain. For this study, we're going to look at today, concluding with Lot, uh, chapter chapter 19, verses 23 through tw uh, 38. I did read last time, verses 23 through 26, but I want to start again with those verses here today as we get into the final part of the story of Lot. Now, you remember last time God had poured out judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a very wicked place. It was a very a very disobedient place, full of sin, uh, full of depravity. God poured out his judgment upon uh, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He told Lot to escape. He tried to take his family members with him. His sons-in-laws would not go. And the result is that they were destroyed by fire, his, the, the son-in-laws. Uh, then as they were leaving, God said, don't look back. And yet his wife is going to look back and she's going to be turned into a pillar of salt. So here you have uh, so far the pain of Lot's life. You, he's going to lose his wife to disobedience. He's going to lose his sons-in-laws to disobedience. Uh, and now we're going to see in the rest of the story today that his daughters are going to do something wicked. And that again is a picture of uh, disobedience that was going to happen in their hearts and in his heart really toward God. Well, let's start it today in verse 23 uh, and we'll read it again. We read it last time, but we're going to read it again today. It says these words, the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Now God had given a specific command, do not look back. Don't, and God is serious. When God gives a command, he means it. When he gives a command, he is serious. He expects obedience to the command. He says uh, in chapter 19, verse 17, he had said, do not look behind you. Uh, this is a wonderful metaphor of life. When you come to the Lord, don't look back. Don't look behind you. Don't live your life looking in the rear view mirror. Instead, keep moving forward. Keep constantly uh, moving toward what God wants you to be. God wants us to grow into Christ's likeness. He wants us to become like Jesus. Now, we are not going to be perfect the way that Jesus was perfect. Obviously, Jesus was God, but he is the model of what God wants us to become, that he wants us to become holy and to become Christ-like in our lives. You cannot do that by keep looking back. And when you keep looking back, keep longing for the things behind you, keep longing for the past relationships, for the past situations, for the past times in your life, you will never become who God wants you to be. So don't look back. So God gave a very specific instruction to them, do not look back, and uh, she did. And in, the, in that disobedience, she had become this pillar of salt. Um, and this goes against the exact warning that God had given through the angels to, um, to Lot to give to his family. Well, we need to keep looking forward to our deliverance and not looking back at a world that is passing away and ripe for judgment. We don't long for the world. Our feet are not in the world. We live in this place, but this is not where our heart is. We long for heaven. We long for uh, eternity with God. So don't have one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. Have both feet in heaven and this place just becomes your home, but you're not really a part of this place. You're uh, a foreigner. You're an alien. You're, an, uh, you're uh, somebody who doesn't belong to this place. You belong to your heavenly abode. Well, 
Abraham is going to learn about the destruction that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's read through that. And Abraham went up early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remember, remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. So we see that uh, Abraham, deeply moved with the memory of the previous day, wanted to go back to that place to meet with God. But when he went to that place, he saw the smoke of the cities and he saw their destruction. He knew that his request was answered, that God had delivered Lot before the destruction came. Now he saw uh, what God had done. He saw that God had fulfilled what his promise was. Uh, this picture of this destruction is very much similar to the kinds of destruction that we are going to see in the end times when you see some of the events that are going to be happening, that God will bring judgment upon the world, that he will bring destruction upon the world. And that uh, this picture of, uh, of evil and sin, there is always a consequence to it. There is a great... There's a great consequence to the to the sinful life, to an evil life, to a life uh, that is that is really separated from God. So we should have a deep, humble submission to God. We should have a deep uh, watchfulness over our lives and over the lives of the people around us that we love. And we should always remember that sin has a consequence, and there is a price that is always going to be paid. Let's keep going. Well, Lot in his escape. He went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him. For he was afraid to dwell in Zor, and he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Now the firstborn of the daughters said to the younger daughter, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come to us in the custom of all of the earth. Now what they're meaning by this is this, that their, their, their husbands were just destroyed in Sodom. They were destroyed in this community and in this place because of the judgment of God. So they don't have any husbands. Now they are past the age that they're going to have husbands. They're not going to find one, uh, someone else. They don't have children of their own. And so they have no community that they can draw upon. They're afraid to go to Zor. So they're living in a cave and they're starting to think, well, what's going to happen? We're not going to have children. We're not going to be able to... Uh, to produce heirs, so what are we going to do? Our father is old, there's no man on earth to come into us, as is the custom of all the earth, that is the sexual relationship. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make our father drunk, we're gonna have him drink wine. When he does, we are going to lie with him. We're gonna have a sexual relationship with him. That we may preserve the lineage of our father. And so what you see in here is a very disturbing way. Now, this is the byproduct of living in a very uh, sick community that he lived in. He lived in a place where a there was a very low, low moral environment there in Sodom. And that low moral environment that he raised his daughters in thereby created um, daughters who really compromised morality. They didn't have the moral structure that they needed to have because of where Lot chose to raise his daughters, where Lot chose to live. Now, you remember at the very beginning that God had called people away from there. That's not where God wanted Lot to live, but Lot kept going back. He went back. This is the place that he settled, and he constantly had the consequences. Uh, he lost everything by choosing to live in that place. He lost his wife. He lost his sons-in-law. He lost the ability for his children or for his daughters and sons-in-law to have children of their own naturally and carry on the family line. Uh, they compromised in their morality. They had a very poor definition of what morality is. They did not obey what God told them to obey. And this is going to result in problems that we are going to see here, a very disturbing scene that we are beginning to see. But this is all the consequence of of really Lot's decision to live away from God. When you make a decision to do your own thing, to you want God in your life, you want him to be connected to your life, but you don't want all of God. You just want a little sliver of God. You want a little sliver of morality, but you want to still do your own thing. 
there are consequences that you will reap. There is always a consequence to disobedience in our lives. And I am not saying this to you, preaching from a high loft at you. I'm saying this from knowing it firsthand in my own life. There are always consequences to the sinful decisions that we make, painful consequences that we all face. Lot's painful consequences were the loss of his his son-in-laws, uh, the loss of his wife, and the moral lowness of his daughters going to result in a very compromising and problematic uh, situation here that is going to give rise to the enemies of Israel. So this is not going to be a good thing. This is going to get give rise to a lot of the... Um, Arab nations and a lot of the enemies of Israel today in the decisions that his daughters make because they have they were people of no morality. Well, let's look at what it what happened here. Here's what it says. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. It happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in, and you lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. So this was the plan. The plan was, we are going to figure out our own way. Now, they could have trusted in the Lord. They could have said, Lord, you provide for us husbands. You provide uh, a child to be born to us. Help us to be obedient to you. We're going to wait upon you. The same way that God was going to provide uh, a child to Abraham and Sarah, he could have just as easily provided one for the daughters of Lot if they would have trusted him and turned to him in their time of need. But they didn't. They tried to fix the problem themselves, and the problem, that their solution to this, is going to create a tremendous problem for the Israelites from this time forward. It goes on to say this, Then they made their father drink wine the second night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn uh, bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger, she bore a son and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. Now, these two places are going to be really the uh, part of that Arab nation that has been born throughout the Middle East today, who have warred with the Israelites from this time on. All of the problematic people in, in these generations are coming out of the modern Middle East today. They have given rise to the Arab nations. Now, look back at the... Uh, at the decision that that uh, Abraham and Sarah made, when their names were Abram and Sarai, they weren't having a child, so so Sarai came up with a brilliant idea. You go ahead and have a sexual relationship with my maidservant Hagar. Well, she bore Ishmael. Ishmael would lead to the Arab nations. Now we have another sinful decision that is made outside of the will of God, outside of God's plan, and now you have rise to the Moabites, to the Ammonites. They are going to rise out of this. That's also part of the Middle Eastern groups today. All of this comes out of sinful decisions to do what is evil and wicked in God's sight, taking matters into our own hands and walking away from God's plan. When you're in the center of God's plan, God blesses it, God leads it, and God directs it. When you step outside of God's plan and do your own thing, make your own plans and make your own way, when you're disobedient toward him, there is a steep price that will be paid. And that's what's happening here. A steep price is going to be paid because of their own decisions to walk away from God in disobedience and sin and do what was morally and ethically and spiritually wrong. By taking matters into their own hands, they would then have consequences that would lead for th that w really would amount to thousands of generations of problems, thousands and thousands of years of problems out of the decisions that they made that very night. Decisions you make don't just affect you; they will affect your children and your children's children. 
So make sure that you stay in the center of God's will. Well, that's the story of Lot. It was a very problematic story. Uh, story. What was the result of Lot doing the things that he did? What was the result of him living in a place he should not live? What was the result of him uh, associating and being influenced by the people he was around by living away from God? Well, his wife died halfway through, his daughters committed fornication, and his sons-in-laws were burnt by the fire from heaven. The consequences that he chose would lead to the consequences that others had. The th decisions that they made will lead to consequences on down the line. God is a faithful God, a loving God, who will bless and show loving kindness toward those who love him to thousands of generations. But to those who turn their backs on him, who walk away from him in disobedience, he will visit upon them the curse for their children and their children thereafter for the generations to come. The decisions you make have consequences, lasting consequences. So make sure that you are walking step by step with the Lord. Well, that's all we have today. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you back here next time as we get into Genesis chapter 20. Have a wonderful day.